Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be comparing the A6 Meta Racer versus the OnCloud Cloud Boom. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description there. There's loads of cool things, including a link to where you can get both of these shoes. Right, so we've got two carbon plated racing shoes, so let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here we go, we've got the A6 Meta Racer and we've got the On Running Cloud Boom. Now I think the Cloud Boom is one of the most awesome names out there. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. And also let me know in the comments, have you got either of these shoes yet? Be interested to check your views out down in the comments. So these are sort of more racing um, carbon plated shoes. I think it's different takes on what's currently out there in terms of carbon plates and what you can do with them. Uh, if you're not seeing the review on the ASICs, I would recommend you check that out. I've also done a performance review with Helen down in Southend, who's a uh, multi-marathon finisher and a very quick runner, uh, and she put them through their paces, so check that out as well. Uh, let's get into some of the stats and some of the features, actually, before we get into which one I prefer. And let's start with the Meta Racer. Um, this shoe basically weighs almost nothing, like the on-running shoe. Uh, it weighs 7.25 ounces. You've got this dual-sided lobster claw carbon plate, uh, which runs from the midfoot to the toe. And it's bottom loaded, so it's beneath the flight foam midsole, and I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, it's got a low stack height, 24 in the heel, 15 in the toe. So it's got a 9mm drop, which the on-running shoe does as well. You've got this incredibly breathable uh, engineered uh, um, mesh upper. You've got the guide sole technology, which is brought over from the uh, glide ride. Uh, and then on the outsole, you've got the ASICS grip, which is basically a big lump of rubber. Then we've got the on-running uh, shoe, which is £170 here in the UK, and it weighs 776 ounces. Um, this is designed for marathons and long distance training. You've got the CloudTech uh, pods um, cushioning system and then you've got the Helion Super Foam. You've got the carbon, carbon, carbon fiber infused speed board. Like I said a second ago the shoe's got a 9mm drip. A uh, drip? Drop? I've got to learn to speak English. And by the way this shoe costs £180 because I forgot to tell you about that. I really need to learn how to speak English. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the ASICs because um, we're talking about breathability because both of these shoes, and that's why another reason why I wanted to compare them uh, is because they're both very breathable. Um, this shoe has been designed to keep your feet uh, cooler because then your body temperature is lower and then you perform better. They've even shoved a hole in the front of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I have to say the overall feel of it is super breathable along with the lightness. It is a touch lighter than the on-running uh, shoe. You don't really notice the lightness difference. Um, I mean, you're talking hardly anything, but you don't notice it at all. Um, the carbon plate is bottom loaded, so it's along here. And what that means is you get this brand new flight foam, uh, which they've made a different uh, composite. So it's a little bit more spongy, I would say. If you're coming down about here, it sort of springs you onto the, to the carbon plate and then you get that snap off of it. And this shoe really does sort of push you onto your toes, even if you're back in off your run, it still tries to keep you up on those toes to increase your speed. And it is noticeable that it's always kind of egging you on to go that little bit faster. Um, the overall shoe with lacing and, and fit is great, fits true to size. A Little bit of cushion around here, but not too much. Uh, the insole's glued in and the tongue is um, like the on running one, it's not attached or anything like that. But yeah, overall great fit. New K9 and a half for me in both of these shoes. So this shoe um, is not necessarily true to size. I am finding it a little bit smaller than I would expect uh, from on running. And what's weird with on running shoes, I actually dropped down to a UK nine in their other shoes and I found them a better fit and I wasn't getting the heel slip which was causing the wear at the back. But this is a nine and a half. I found it reasonably small. Um, you've got uh, normal lacing, tongue is not attached like the ASICs. There is a collar of foam there. Let's give you that little bit of cushioning. I like the way they've taken that away from your heel. Uh, the breathability, like I said, is, is amazing in this shoe and it reminds me of the uh, Saucony Endorphin Pro and Speed. Then we've got the Helion um, uh, midsole, which is okay, but what, they've, what I found with this shoe is actually quite firm. Um, which I think, I don't know whether that's to do with the speedboard, and which is kind of cool, what I do like about this shoe, is the speedboard, which is the carbon plate, you can see that running all the way through the shoe, it's kind of cool isn't it, and it's here as well, it's wicked that you can see it. And then you've got the Cloud Tex, um, which if you're new to on running, they're there, that's basically shaving weight, but giving you the same supposed uh, response in, in terms of your midsole. Um, the outsole, you've got plenty of grip on there, um, and 
you've got then obviously the cloud tech here slightly exposed but you've got rubber in all the right places the ride is well i wouldn't call it snappy um and again i think i mentioned it in every video now these shoes aren't designed for me right i'm not an elite runner um and I'm not probably running the speeds to get the max out of these shoes. So I'll put it out there straight away. But what I found with this is that it wasn't noticeably like snappy and faster. You know, when you put a carbon plated shoe on, you really, I mean, you go into it with big uh, aspirations to the fact that you're just going to be cracking along. And you don't get it from this. Like I said a second ago, with this, it really tries to push you onto your toes and get you up and get you out. Um, where this thing, I don't know, it just, it just felt like a normal racing flat, like a, a, a running shoe. It wasn't anything lightweight. Uh, it was, it just wasn't anything special and I wasn't getting a real snap out of it. it. It just left me sort of feeling a bit like, I've just paid 170 quid for what? Do you know what I mean? This is 180 pound and, and I can feel where my money's being spent, but 170 pound, and I think I said it in the, uh, the video on this shoe, it's like they kind of got another on running shoe I thought, oh, everyone's doing carbon plates. We better do one. Let's cut the midsole in half and shove one in and then tell everybody that it's awesome. I mean, it's really harsh and on running uh, and they do make some good shoes. But I just feel like this is a little bit late to the party and they're not really bringing anything new to it. And it's, it's a lot of money, 170 quid. And really, you're probably better off buying this.